So our first task when we want to analyze this bench is to look at the self-weight of the bench itself. And because the weight of the top of the bench is uniform, we can model this with a uniformly distributed load. And now we've got to try and find the bending moment diagram from that. Now, the best place to start is at either of these ends, because the lever arm of this load is going to be zero, so the moment is going to be zero at the ends. Um, now we move away from the end, and we can find the moment is going to be in increasing. So if we take a cut through the beam, an arbitrary distance away from the end, we release some of those um, constraints then we can look to the left and look at what's happening. And we've got this uniformly distributed load section here. And we can model this as a point load, we can represent it as a point load, with this line of action exactly halfway in the middle of this section of load, because obviously the average of it is halfway. So we've got effectively this load acting, and the distance over which it's acting is going to be this distance divided by 2. So it's going to be, let's call the distance x. Then we have x over 2 acting. The magnitude of this is going to be, let's say the magnitude of the load is w, then w times by the distance we have away from the end, which is going to be x. So we times the force times the distance to get a moment, W, and we've got another x, so that's x squared, over 2. And that gives us an equation for what the moment's going to be at any distance away from the end. So with this, we can start to construct a bending moment diagram. So the interesting thing to note about how this equation will increase as x increases is that it's a square relationship. So we expect to see a parabola, or a parabolic shape, to the bending moment diagram. And as x increases, the moment is going to increase by a square term. It's going to start off small and get bigger like that. And that's what the qualitative shape of the bending moment diagram is going to look at from the end up until the support. And because it's a completely symmetric load case, the whole bending moment diagram just can be modelled by a reflection of that in this axis here. And now we come to trying to plot the shear force diagram. And before we do that, it's important to note, of course, that with this load on the top, we're going to have to have a reaction force, a vertical reaction force, from the support itself to keep, make vertical equilibrium. So when we start drawing the shear force diagram, it's going to be a relatively similar situation. Because the shear is basically the internal reaction that resists the loading, the shear force is going to increase in the beam from one end or the other in fact as we move away because the net load on the part of the beam we're interested in is increasing. So the shear force is going to increase but only as a function of the length. It's not going to be a squared relationship. And this is where we get the fact that shear force is the first derivative of bending moment. Because when you, you have a parabolic bending moment diagram, you're just going to get a linear shear force. And now we get to this part here at the support to the vertical. And there's something we need to take into account, and that's this reaction force, which is obviously going to equate to a reaction force here as well. And this reaction force is going to be the magnitude of the whole load itself. Whereas so far we've only got to a magnitude that equates to half the load. So, because it's going the opposite direction, we're going to see a jump in the shear force diagram. It's going to go all the way down to there, back to zero. And then it's going to go back to, again, a sort of symmetric case from here. And from then on, it's quite easy. You just go back to zero. But you notice how the direction of shear changes as you go from one side of the support to the other. So finally, we're going to have to work out the deflected shape of our structure. And the, I think the best place to start with that is to look at points where we know exactly what's going to happen. And the best place to do is start at the support. We know 
there's not going to be any horizontal or vertical deflection and because we've got an end caster here there's not going to be any rotation either so we're going to start off going vertically upwards like that and actually something we failed to mention when we looked at the bending moments is there's no bending in this column because we have a completely symmetrical case because there's no bending in the column we don't expect there to be any curvature of the form so it's going to be straight all the way up to the top which is nice and easy for us so so far we've got no deflection but now we do come to parts where there's bending now we've got these connections here which because they're going to be relatively hefty connections in comparison to the rest of the beam we're not going to expect any curvature there either so so far we've got absolutely nothing happening but as we move further away from this connection the stiffness of these sections are going to relatively decrease so we're going to start to see some downwards curvature in response to that vertical load and there we are, it's obviously exaggerated but that's what we're going to get as far as the deflection goes